<laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to talk about the Braxtons. So, this episode was cute or whatever. Y'all know I think the, Brax- the Braxtons is one of the best reality TV shows out. I do. You know I say that in every, uh, every review. Because I feel like this is the only reality show. Yes, it can be triggered. Not can. Yes, it is triggering. Um, I think it. I think it forces a lot of us to put a mirror up. Hey. I think the bad thing for some people when it comes to this show is that it reminds. Um, it reminds some folk of their dysfunctional family. Because I do believe that when we watch reality TV, we watch it to kind of get away from our reality. That's why we first. That's why we used to love watching. The housewives, because let's just be honest, girl, most of us didn't have, most of us don't live like Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when we turn on the TV, we see some of these girls who live in just like, girl, lavishly. Dr. Nicole, you know, pulling up to, to parties in boats. Girl, where? Eating lobster in the park. <laughs> girl, full of picnic. We're going to pack up a couple of sandwiches <laughs> and a couple of bags of chips. And a little bottle of barefoot wine and gonna buy our business. Anyways, I like this. You know, I love the Braxtons. Can we just talk? <clears throat> Can we just talk? <sighs> okay, I'll start off with something light. Tony meets up with um her mama. They uh, meet up for dinner. Tony, <laughs> girl, Tony has a cold. She said it's not contagious. I, ain't, I don't know what that means. When I hear about it, when I, let me tell you something. If, if you tell me you have a cold, it's contagious. <laughs> unless you tell me, unless you, if I want, if you walk up to me and you stuffy and you sound a mess, you're going to have to tell me it's allergies. <laughs> if you tell me I got a cold, as far as I'm concerned, it's contagious. <laughs> girl, when she, told, when she told Miss Evelyn that she had a cold, Miss, girl, Miss Evelyn looked up. <laughs> so, so. Daughter, daughter, I love you to pieces, but if I knew you had a cold, I wouldn't have came here. I'm old. That stuff is going around again. I don't have time to be going out early because God done came out and you, girl, want to be across the table from me. Girl, yeah. <laughs> All of that. Anyway, she says she ain't contagious, though. A cold is contagious. I don't care what nobody say. Girl, let's Google it. A cold's contagious. Let's see. Because Tony said hers wasn't contagious. Maybe she right. Our colds. Okay, there we go. Yes. A cold, it's the first thing popped up. Yes, colds are highly contagious and can spread, spread through contact and droplets of fluid that contain the cold virus. These droplets can be transformed by touch, airborne droplets, contaminated surfaces, saliva, skin to skin contact. So Tony said they're not. Oh, Tony, you ain't, you ain't about... You ain't gonna never, girl, you sit there and lie to that old woman knowing colds are contagious. Now, Miss Elvin, if Miss Elvin would have went home to glory, we would have blamed it on Tony. Okay? Anyways, um, they're talking about, uh, you know, she's uh, doing a residency in Vegas. Um, she described it more as a variety show with Cedric the Entertainer. She says she's gonna be on stage telling a couple of jokes. Um, I'm assuming this is a restaurant she goes to pretty often because she told the waiter that they'll have their what they re- what, what they regularly have. Um, um, anyway, she tells a joke, and the joke is basically, um, <laughs> "What do you call a bear with no teeth?" <laughs> it's so corny. Is it, I heard some kids. You know, my my apartment complex really doesn't have kids. Y'all hear them kids? Girl, they're my nieces. Because when my nieces be coming over, honey, I can hear them when they get out the elevator. Girl, now, now mind your elevator's around the corner. <laughs> okay, girl, they be loud. I think it's a, um, but I have, I will, I will say, I have noticed a couple of um, people who have kids over here now. So I guess I just lied to y'all. But for the most part, kid, people with kids don't live over here. Girl, I live like in a party area. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
so yeah, there was one guy at the pool earlier. Um, I assume that was his wife or girlfriend, and they have a son. And then you just heard those kids. And I do remember this one lady, this one white man and an Asian lady. They had a baby. I don't know if they still live here, though. I know one time they, somebody put an ad up about the, uh, hiring a nanny. And I assumed it was them. I was going to tell them, I watch I'm not changing no diapers. I watch your baby. While you, if you need some sleep, girl, you can bring the baby over here, girl. <laughs> and just go, you can go back around the corner and go to sleep. But I'm not changing no diapers. Okay? I rock the, I, you know, I don't mind, girl, crying don't bother me, honey. I've been putting my AirPods on and drowned it, and drowned it out. Hello? But if you just want a couple of hours of sleep, you can bring your baby around here. I just charge you a couple of dollars. I ain't gonna charge you too much, but I'm gonna charge you a couple of dollars. <laughs> Anyways, girl. Um, Miss Evelyn is going on uh, a date. You know, <laughs> I guess if love is what you desire, then girl, go for what you know. But girl, I just do not want to be dating. Well, I don't date anyways. But if I had a desire to date, I would just not, I would not want to be dating at 70. How old is Miss Evelyn? She has to be close to 70. Has to be. Let's Google it. Um, Evelyn Braxton. Oh, girl, she's 76. Oh, baby, no. <laughs> girl. Girl, baby. You... I know people living to be 125 now. 76? Girl, I'm not going to be out here dating at no 76, girl. I'm about to enjoy the rest of my life. Girl, hang out with my sisters, hang out with my friends. You know, my sister friends. Girl, play with my grandchildren. Girl, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Not no 76. Mm -mm. But shout out to y'all. Unless you're already in a marriage. But just to be out here just dating, stressing, girl, like, mm -mm. I guess. Anyways, girl, do what you want to do, girl. Um, Tamar and Carlos King. You know, you know, Carlos King, he was on uh, a tour. I don't know if he still is or not. I don't know. Um, I remember he went to uh, D.C., I think for Mother's Day. And I was thinking about going, I think I was thinking about going to D.C. And I was also thinking about going to um, the Mother's Day, like the, you know, the, 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 the event that he holds. But I didn't go to D.C. Anyways, it's called Messy Mondays. Um, so he's interviewing Tamar in, her, in front of a live audience. And they, he asks Tamar, he mentions that Tamar was a breakout star, which she definitely was. Um, girl, can I just say something? Y'all know I like Tamar. Tamar really has the ingredients to be very successful at what she does. I was about to say she has the ingredients to be a star. I really believe that. When you go back to the beginning of the Brax, Braxton Family Values, Tamar was funny. She was a breakout star. She can sing. Like, she just has, I think she has the ingredients. What messes Tamar up? And I don't know if she wants to real recognize this or accept this, is she taps into that messy side whether she's beefing with Kay Michelle, beefing with Tommy, then girl, you're messy. The messiness of it all, it overshadows what you're actually here to do, which is to be successful, be entertaining, be the singer, the talk show host, the reality star. Girl, her life is so messy. And the messiness always it always, it always tops whatever else she has going on. And I really hate that for Tamar. But Tamar still, I, don't, I feel like Tamar still hasn't learned her lesson. I don't think that you should deal with anybody 
that you don't want to deal with. I don't give a damn if it's your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brothers, your nieces, your nephews, your grandmama, your granddad. I don't care. If you are in a relationship with someone and it does not benefit you, it's always draining. You're always crying. Girl, you're always in and out of the hospital. Your hair falling out. Girl, let it go. I don't give a damn who, what the title is. So Tamar doesn't owe her family anything. And just because they're sisters does not mean that they have to deal with each other. However, I do find it mind-boggling that Tamar, I feel as though, has distanced herself from her sisters, especially Tawanda. But girl, she's still willing to give these men a chance time after time after time. I don't see Tamar going back and forth online with her sisters. I see, I see Tamar going back and forth online with some, with some milk. <laughs> Tamar reminds me of the type of person who would end a friendship with someone who she's been knowing since elementary school. She's been knowing since college, have been, have been friends for 40 years, been friends for 20 years. But she would keep a hold to a relationship with a man. And I'm saying all this to say, because there was a part in the, the show where he asked her, did the show come between her marriage? Also, she let it be known that she wanted to quit after season three. She calls herself a friend of the show this season. So I guess she doesn't really consider herself a full-time cast member. She's a friend of. She said her boundaries are firm. So I don't know if she's talking about her sisters. I'm assuming she's talking about her sisters. She also, uh, it was also alluded that, um, I guess, the production, the people behind the scenes, um, were they were not up to Tamar's liking. And now there are people who look like her and Carlos. I forgot. I don't know if Carlos said that or Tamar said that. Um, and that, that, that led me to the whole thing I just said about, I don't know if Tamar ever considers that while it's a possibility that her sisters may not be who she needs in her life, it, 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 it it's crazy that she has sat here and, and, and drawn out all these boundaries and all these lines in the sand, but girl, you still ain't drawn no line in the sand when it comes to these men. And they are the ones from what the streets are saying. I don't know because I wasn't there. But these are the ones who are actually knocking your head knocking your head up against the wall. That's what Miss Evelyn said, that, that Vince was chasing you. Girl, hello? Miss Evelyn came out and said that, that Vince was over there, girl, putting his hands on you. Right? And you'll still come out and be like, oh, girl, we have a great relationship now. So either your mama was lying. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? And then you had David, who was over there, I think, Mentally, mentally and emotionally abusing Tamar. And then she still was like, girl, I'm going to give love another chance. Then she get with who? Jeremy. And Jeremy was online just the other day, girl, making fun of your mental health. Basically calling you crazy. Girl, using your credit card, <laughs> girl, using your credit card in New Orleans. Sliding in the DM of some girl in Houston. <laughs> Girl, getting with your ops, Tommy, <laughs> y'all already know, girl, he done went and mush on her asshole and came back and kissed you in your mouth. And you still married him after all of that, after all the stuff this man has done. You still turned around and you married him after that. And then the gag part, the gag of it all is even with all of the stuff that we have seen that has transpired between Tommy, I mean, between Tamar and her ex, now ex-husband, that's another thing, girl. He was not honest about the, their, their their relationship. He didn't. He he came down. He came down to the internet and gave a whole six seven minute speech. And not one time did he tell the people that that was actually his wife, because he knew how we would have come come across if he would have let the people know that girl that was actually my wife. He wants to try to paint the picture of a girl. We were just friends. We were just friends. We were trying to figure it out. No, nigga, that was your wife, and y'all were separated, but y'all were still hanging out and probably still hunching. 
Anyways, so I, we've seen the things that we've seen happen between Tamar and JR. And even with all of that being said, I still felt like when Tamar and JR came down here the other day to the internet, it still felt like to me they were, they were trying to hold on by bringing the kids into the situation. You know, I love, you know, I love my daughters. You know, I love my son. Girl, y'all been together for probably a year. Y'all are not that. In, I'm, I hate to I hate to be the negative, the negative asshole down to the YouTube and trying to tell people what, what they feel and what they don't feel. But girl, I refuse to believe that girl within a year is within the amount of time that Tamar and, and, and that man were together. That girl, you just have grown to have this close, 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 close bond with his kids and vice versa to the point where girl, y'all feel like y'all still need to be in each other's lives. No, girl, y'all are probably using those kids to remain in each other's lives. Hello? God, I tell you we're just talking today. So I just want Tamar to do better. I do. I just want Tamar to do better. I want Tamar to leave the men alone. Girl, it's not your calling, baby. That's not your ministry. It's not. It's not. Every time we look up, girl, you with some man and he embarrassing you. Vince used to talk, Vince used to talk to Tamar like she was fucking crazy. I keep telling you, that's why I never watched the Vince and Tamar spinoff show, because I did not like Vince and I did not like the way he talked to that girl. And then your mama came out and said he was putting his hands on you. Then you got with David and they said he was there talking to you crazy. Then you got with then you got with JR. And girl, we'll see how that turned out. Girl, Tay, Tay, leave the niggas alone. Get your career together. Get your music. I just want to. I want to see Tamar just sing on stage, not dance. Girl, stop dancing too. Girl, I want to see Tamar sing on stage. I want to see Tamar be a great reality TV star. I want to see Tamar back on TV, being a being a talk show host. Tamar has the ingredients to have a very successful career. Why you cutting your sisters off? Cut these niggas off too. <laughs> okay, and I'm not even telling Tamar to have a conversation, have a have a relationship with Tawanda or whomever she has an issue with in her family. But girl, it sounds like the niggas are the bigger issue than your sisters, though. Anyways, let me let me leave Tamar alone. Oh, we like Tamar. I really do like Tamar. Um, so Miss E. <laughs> Meet up with Marla Gibbs. Shout out to Marla Gibbs, girl, the iconic, legendary girl, Marla Gibbs. Um, I think it was her daughter, Angela, and then Judge Maybelline. Shout out to Judge Maybelline, baby. Um, I thought that was a cute scene, <laughs> girl. When Marla, girl, when Miss Marla Gibbs said they were talking about, like, I guess staying at a certain age. You know, like girl, I choose to vibrate like I'm 30 years old. I choose to vibrate like I'm 40 years old. And then they were talking, girl, and she, was, she used to wear vibrate. And they were kind of talking about sex. Well, not, they were talking about sex. And she used to wear vibrate. And they was like, don't use that word. And then they asked her something about sex. And then Marla Gibbs said, I should, <laughs> wait, I've been there, done that. <laughs> and actually, it's something you can do for yourself. I said, I know that's right. Wallace, that girl, these niggas don't do shit anyway. You got to finish yourself off when they climb on top of you anyway. So you might as well just do it yourself to begin with, okay? You see um, you see how, uh, what's her name? I'm being messy. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing, girl. We just talking. What's that, what's that nigga name? DJ Envy and Gia. You saw Gia over there with a tribe called Quest, honey. She got about 50, 11 kids. Girl, she came out and told us that, girl, she ain't had no orgasm. So this nigga been climbing on top of you, girl, banging your brains out, huffing and puffing, sweating, girl. And girl, you ain't even, you ain't even got no pleasure. Girl! Ah! Y'all see how my skin is, I think the people know, you see how my skin is lighter than my face? Y'all see? Y'all see? Ain't that crazy? <sighs> Kevin Jr.
So Kevin had a counseling session with Spirit. And it was very emotional to the point where he had a seizure. They say he started having seizures once his mother passed away. The good thing is that he wasn't alone and he was still at work. I hope he getting paid. Girl, let me tell you something. If Kevin not getting paid, if Kevin not getting paid, because Kevin has been a big part of the storyline this season, if not the storyline, hello? If Kevin Jr. is not getting paid, then girl, some of the water definitely ain't clean. If Kevin not getting paid for his appearance on this show, so I'm assuming that Kevin getting paid. Anyways, so Kevin started having seizures when his mother, Tracy, passed away. The um, counseling session was so uh, emotional that he had a seizure. Um, the producers and everybody was there. They called Tawanda. Tawanda arrives, and she, of course, she calls him Scrap. Girl. She called him Scratchy. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not buying the Scratchy. I know she's called him Scratchy before. I just feel like she's trying to go into overdrive, trying to make it seem as though they're closer than what they really is. Like, even like last week when she caught, when she told, girl, when she told Siri, who, who, what's, what's his name? Siri or Susie, Keisha? You know, the people on your, the person on the phone. The help on your phone. Is it Siri? When you driving? Who is it when you, when you driving? Who are you talking to? I don't use it. Y'all know who I'm talking about. On your phone. She was driving and she was like, call Scratchy. You're in the car. Even, even Miss Thing, even Miss Thing was like, Scratchy. <laughs> Girl, a scratch is a sensation that you have on your body parts. Girl, Miss Thing started giving a definition of what a scratch was. I'm just playing. She really didn't. But I think I do remember, I do remember the car basically not realizing who. Scratchy was because girl, you don't call you don't call that boy scratchy like that. Everybody is confused. Your son was confused. Bond was confused. I was confused. Some of the other viewers wasn't confused. Some of the cousins we was confused. Girl, who the hell is scratchy? Now you want to call talking about call scratchy and girl Miss Siri is like girl who is scratchy? A scratch is a sensation on your body that requires maybe for you to itch, for you to scratch it. I don't know, just made up some job. Anyways, girl, she's still calling him scratchy. Girl, whatever, girl. I like Tawanda, though. Tawanda got body, too. When Tawanda was walking in that building, I said, oh, Tawanda is thick. Damn. <laughs> girl, anyways. Um, he has court the next day. So he has to be back in Baltimore. So he's in Atlanta. But they don't think it's safe for him to fly because he just had a seizure. You know what I thought was so confusing to me? Kevin, from what I remember, y'all correct me if I'm wrong if you watch the show, Kevin made a comment about not or feeling um, not feeling at ease staying in his hotel room by himself. And Tawanda was like, basically, you ain't got to worry about it. You know, we're going to be calling your phone every five minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, if this is y'all nephew, and he's telling you to your face that he pretty much doesn't want to stay in his hotel room by himself, because he just had a seizure, why not just say, okay, well, girl, just go spend a night at grandmama's house or spend a night at my house or go to Trina's house or like, girl, all y'all live in y'all, girl, you know what I'm Like, that's, it's shit like that that make me question, like, if he's telling you that he is, he didn't say afraid, but clearly he has some reservation about staying alone because his seizure just happened. And it probably, and again, this, this is not the first time it has happened. So, and I'm and I'm almost sure that the times that it ha it has happened, they probably were not around because he lives in Baltimore or DMV and the DMV area, and um, they live in Atlanta. But I I just felt like it was weird that they still put him in that hotel room 
after he expressed what he expressed to Zawanda. Because you want to walk around and talk, calling him scratchy, girl. Anyway. Um, so, the next day, Trina and Miss Evelyn. Somebody said out of everybody, and I do believe this, out of everybody, the one that I would trust the most is Trina. Tony don't give a damn about um, Kevin Jr. I hate to say it. <laughs> Tony only worried about herself, her health. She don't show too much care for her family. I, I think Kevin Jr. is just her nephew, and that's it. Hello? Tamar got so much going on. I don't think she really close to her family. To want, I feel like the only one that I would trust the most would be Trina, then maybe Tawanda. But Trina at the top of the list. Um. So, okay. He had to go to court the next day, I guess, for his divorce hearing. The wife told him that she would reschedule because he wouldn't be able to make it the next day. She didn't reschedule. And because he didn't show up to court, she got full custody of the baby and she got the house. I don't know. I wasn't there. <sighs> you know, I, I try to hold myself with some type of integrity. And when I get on here, even though, girl, we talk a lot of shit. You know, I talk a lot of shit. You know, I talk a lot of shit. And girl, we messy as hell. And girl, I just report what the blogs say and what Google says. And we give our opinion based off of the things that are already out there. Um, and just because it's on the blogs doesn't mean that it's the truth, right? Baby, I just want to know what happened between Kevin and his wife. Because the streets are talking. And the streets are talking. <laughs> okay. And uh, the streets are talking. <laughs> okay. And so I don't know. I'm going to try and figure out some stuff. And then by the next review, we'll probably have, uh, you know, I might even do a, just a whole separate video. We might do a, a separate video on what ha what's going on or what happened between Kevin and his wife. Um, but if what the streets are saying are true, I can definitely understand why she didn't give a damn about rescheduling the hearing Girl, it is what it is. Your ass ain't here. It ain't, girl. Oh, yeah, I reschedule it. Mm-hmm. Y'all gonna reschedule it. Yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. Y'all gonna reschedule it. Yeah, tell him, I, tell him I reschedule it. And girl, she got the phone. She said, girl, fuck that nigga. I ain't rescheduling shit. <laughs> and she took her ass to court. All I'm going to say is this. Allegedly, girl, Vincent Tamar's ex-husband ain't the only one who can't keep his hands to himself. That's what the people have been saying. I don't know. I hope it's not true. But something definitely, you know, has been happening or happened between the wife and Kevin. I don't know if they back together. I don't know. I don't keep up with Kevin like that. I don't keep up with none of them like that outside the show. But we're going to have to figure some stuff out, get to the bottom of it. Because like I said, if, the, if, 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 if you know, if the scuttlebutt is true, honey, then...
I could see why she probably was like, girl, fuck that nigga. All right, y'all. I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> Is that it? Let me look over these notes. I really didn't take a lot of notes. You know, Kevin had a seizure. Okay, Tamar. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm hmm that was it. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good day. Bye, y'all.